so welcome, welcome everyone. Um, we are a uh, small but mighty group um, tonight, so appreciate you uh, uh, coming out and uh, continuing our, uh, our journey. Um, so tonight we're going to uh, continue conversations regarding the um, uh, outdoor uh, competition stadium or outdoor facilities. Um, so we'll spend a little bit of time recapping for meeting seven um, and then go into uh, just some uh, uh, potential projects or, or looking at a little bit more refined um, version of uh, what a competition uh, stadium would be. Again, defining needs and, and goals um, and uh, reviewing potential options. Um, we're also then going to spend some time just looking at preliminary site exploration. Again, we're not going to be real estate agents as part of this uh, plan, but we want to have an idea um, of uh, what we think makes sense as a, a site for some of this work. Um, some of the things like parking and location, uh, that type of thing to uh, just discuss. And then we'll close it up by, uh, by 6 o'clock. Um, I think part of as we're moving forward, one of the things that will be important um, as we finish up this group moving forward, I think, is we've, we've been in the air with a lot of information and a lot of different topics. Um, and I think it's important for us to get somewhat of a line of sight of how we're going to land the plane <laughs> um, with, uh, with this group. Um, and so one of the things that we'll do at our next meeting is probably look at just a preliminary draft of, you know, how are we going to present to the school board as far as recommendations and start to synthesize all of the work that we've, uh, that we've done. So that'll happen at the next meeting and then refine that for our final meeting so we can make sure that everybody understands um, how that's going to be projected as we're moving forward. And obviously, you know, committee members will have direct input um, uh, into that and make uh, Make sure that we're all on the same page as we move forward. So, all right. Um, so, do we want to introduce our subject matter experts just to make sure everybody knows who's in the room? All right. So, um, subject matter experts uh, tonight with us: uh, Matt Callahan, uh, boys soccer from Oshkosh West. Uh, ben Matthew, head football coach from Oshkosh West. <laughs> Steve Dan's a track and field North High. Great. All right, like I said, small but mighty group tonight. So, um, so with that, I'll click it over, kick, kick it over to Clint. Click it over to Clint. Click it. Yeah, just click it. Um, again, as we've been doing, we've been tracking our feedback, so I'm going to kind of skip ahead uh, to meeting seven. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, again, I, I, as Brian said, I think we landed the plane uh, pretty well with the pool in terms of kind of what, uh, uh, where we wanted the group to be. Uh, I'm, uh, again, probably not going to go through this in a ton of detail. I think the 50 meter um, uh, was, was seen again as, as the good choice to uh, continue this conversation. Um, uh, again, high quality uh, facility, uh, serve the needs for a long time up in the future. A uh, number of comments about the Special Olympics uh, group and again, making sure that we're inclusive, both of them and Ashi and a few others. So again, uh, as we look to sell this to the community, we're going to need all of our par partners to uh, be there with us. Um, again, a little bit about you know defining what partnership is, defining um, land, um, and then as we talked about, where's the best place to be? Um, should this be attached? Should this not be attached? So again, that probably is really based on the availability of property and where again where we can best locate this facility. I guess before we jump ahead, anything, not just the pool, but any of the other topics uh, popping to mind uh, or want to give some consideration or thought to as we move forward? Okay. You guys are good. Didn't even, didn't even get to the, the meat, meat and potatoes yet. So, so again, tonight, uh, competition stadium, outdoor facilities, um, kind of however you want to term it. We've, uh, on the chart here, we have competition stadium listed. Uh, again, as we've been, uh, we want to go through a whole bunch of precedents. This time we did include, uh, I'd say, a, a large number of precedents in terms of looking at all of your um, conference uh, partners or neighbors or, or uh, opponents um, and kind of looking to see what they have as well. Again, what we're most familiar with are both our high schools, uh, north and west. Uh, again, uh, the clicker doesn't work here, but there's, you know, there's tennis, some baseball, softball, 
our, our track facility here. Again, the, the competition venue is, is used at, at Titan Stadium, and we'll get to that in a bit. Again, West has some softball, some baseball, track, uh, practice fields for soccer, football, uh, tennis as well. And then again, uh, Titan Stadium is utilized for competition. I guess I'd just like to maybe quickly turn it over to our, our competition or our, our subject matter experts in terms of use of Titan Stadium and just maybe explain to the group briefly how you guys currently use it. I'll start. Uh, so Titan Stadium, they put the turf in in 2004. Until that time, it was a grass field and just north and west played their Friday night football. That was it. They put the turf in, then we moved soccer from Schumerth to Titan Stadium. They put the track in. We ran all of our big track invites at Titan Stadium as well. So we went from nine or ten Friday nights in the fall to soccer and football in the fall, and then soccer and track in the spring. So initially it was, it was a real shot in the arm for us, and it was the only her facility in the conference. So everybody loved coming to it from 2004 till now just about everybody besides Fondi, Nina has a turf field. So things have really, really changed. UWL's programs have grown and it's tough. And, and when the turf was put in at Titan, then Lords also became a player. And so Lords usually played their games on Saturdays that uh, the UWO football team was away, so when it was grass. So now we're playing doubleheader football games. Uh, soccer, we're there probably three quarters of the time, but we have a, we have difficulty playing all of our games there for a, a variety of reasons. Uh, track, the track has been in disrepair. We haven't hosted a track meet at Titan Stadium for probably seven years. When we used to hold three or four big track meets, a conference, a regional, a sectional, every spring. So that's that's what I have to say about Titan Stadium. Yeah. I'll just add the second track you see there is um, the Oshkosh Bagosh track. They probably resurfaced that Craig over 10 years ago. We we really don't use it. It's not a track that's suitable for high school competition. Um, middle school ran a meet there a couple of times, but not in recent memory. The baseball and softball field, Oshkosh West has never played baseball there. We have used the softball stadium to host sectional final games. So from a, from a usage standpoint, it's primarily been the turf field and the, the uh, track. Um, the, the hard part, like Craig mentioned, is with the university's programs, you know, when it comes to scheduling, they're the priority, um, you know, because of their student needs. And then we are secondary, which means we've got to work around uh, the scheduling that's open. Uh, with last year, the alternative fall season being in the spring, um, the ability of having a turf field was probably never more important with football being in the spring and schools struggling to get outside on an outdoor grass surface. So it was really busy there last year because the university was allowed more practice days. So last year was a real juggling act trying to find the time to, to get on the turf. But like anything else, um, we'd love to have more time, but it's just not available, at least at usable hours that make sense for, for high school. And I'd also like to add to, I think, a relevant point, please, gentlemen, correct me if I'm wrong, but Fond du Lac just approved a, a turf field at their, at their school, am I, am I correct? With, with a referendum, if I read, if I read correctly? They're, they're going to do a study for one. I, I, don't, I don't know that they necessarily approved. Okay, I thought I read the opposite. But also, and then Nina, of course, with their new school, a, is also going to have a nice yeah. turf field at their school, which would, would make us two schools, I think, the only ones in the conference that doesn't have one at their school. And I apologize. So Nate, Nate did correct me. They are going to move forward. They're yeah. going through a proposal That's my process. Thought. Okay, right great. Now, so. Thank you. Hey, and Brad, doesn't it have implications for Booster Club too that we can't make as much money concessions wise? Yeah, uh, there, there's a, a rental fee we pay. Um, you know, we supply 
most of our product, but beverage, we have to pay the university's contract, which is somewhat similar. But like anything else, when you don't own it, um, usage becomes a challenge at times. You don't always have it when you need it or want it. Uh, we do the best we can. The university has worked with us as best as they can. But like anything else, there are challenges for all groups. Um, it takes us, you know, probably the, probably the most challenging for, for West in, in recent years was um, we had to move a home tournament soccer game that we would have would earn the right to play at home on the road because we just couldn't get the stadium due to other scheduling conflicts. And that's pretty hard to tell your kids you've earned a home game, but you can't play there because we don't have a site. So that's probably one of the more difficult things to, in recent memory, to explain to, to kids and families. Um, I don't know if it needs to be pointed out, but another interesting thing is there's only about 115 parking spots. Uh, on this site, so um, for a uh, almost 10,000 seat stadium, uh, obviously a challenge. Um, and I, coincidentally, I think as we go through, that'll be the smallest number number you're going to see for for any of the fields we're going to look at. So uh, interesting. Is that on site parking? Yes. Yeah. That's this teeny tiny little parking. I mean, lot. there is parking adjacent, but I think somebody just bought that associated. Just the, the university, building. I think, did. Yeah. So is that? I don't know. So another 50 spots or so there. Plus they park in the grass yeah. way up there. They sure do. <laughs> and street parking's you know not a real busy neighborhood. That field, one of the churches uses it for their pantry. I don't. It's not. It's not horrible. I don't mind paying them five dollars for their pantry. <laughs> <laughs> So again, uh, not to go through and, and, and go into a whole lot of detail, but just kind of want to quickly kind of share what, uh, again, what the other conference schools have. Uh, Appleton East, I did the best to estimate um, some of the, or we did the best to estimate some of the seating numbers. Uh, again, tried to do a little bit of research to see if it, if it was readily available. So we kind of calculated linear feet and sort of used what we would do for a code analysis. So I'd say this, is, this maybe is, is, again, plus or minus a bit. Um, if, if any of you guys specifically know any of these, please feel free to throw out the number. Uh, again, parking here, um, about 300 in that, the lot uh, to the north, uh, but Appleton uh, East. I did not include Appleton West. It's a postage stamp of a site. Um, so I think they have maybe zero parking uh, on their site. Uh, but north, a little bit bigger stadium capacity, a little bit uh, parking. I would say this is a very traditional kind of layout in terms of relationship to the school, to the parking, uh, to the fields. Um, so it works well uh, to function both for the school and for um, activities. Uh, Fond du Lac, so I'm, I am showing here the high school site, which again, uh, their plan is to locate their competition field um, on this site. So obviously that will improve their parking. Uh, access to parking. Uh, currently they're at uh, Fruith Field. Um, they have about 350 spots, both uh, the lot on the site and then the lot across uh, the road at the old high school uh, site as well. Again, about 3,400 uh, for seating there. I don't know, do you know what they're targeting? Uh, they're targeting uh, like 2,600. 1,600 on the big side and 1,000 at the early. Uh, Hortonville, uh, again, 664, utilizing a number of the parking lots kind of in the adjacent uh, area of the, the stadium there, and about 2,800 uh, seats there. Kakana, uh, seat capacity 3,500, uh, and then again about uh, 860 parking spots uh, in, in a little lot couple little lots down here as well as their main high school uh, parking field to the north of the high school. University of Kimberly, um, so this one is unique. Uh, this is their high school, exists on, uh, on their site, and then uh, their stadium, Papermaker Stadium, is actually at the middle school site. Uh, again, fairly low number of parking spots on the site uh, with, with that middle school parking lot. Uh, and then the capacity above 3,800. Are you sure they have that much seating there? Yes, yeah, it's beautiful. Hmm. They must have a 
lot of people at a football game when there is like no room for visitors. <laughs> Um, uh, well, yeah, if you kind of jump back, yeah, I mean, they, they, do have, they do have on kind of, again, a whole They have it on both sides and in the side. corners, yeah. but they have it filled. Yeah. Uh, so, Nina, uh, this is their new high school site. Uh, so, the yellow is the, the new high school, and then their fields are kind of off uh, to the back. Uh, so, roughly, they're planning for 3,500 seats uh, for their stadium. And then again, their parking, total parking, they have about a thousand parking spots on, on the high school site that they're planning for. I uh, wanted to just show Sun Prairie. Sun Prairie, again, uh, building a second high school. Um, so their uh, very nice field facility here with the baseball, uh, uh, and then this is really more of their uh, track, competition track and soccer. And then football uh, and, well, and soccer will be played at, they have a, a joint uh, location called Ashley Field that they just built uh, uh, last year. So this is 4,000. Uh, this kind of was set in motion when they built the high school back in, the, when they built East, or what will be called, all called East. They left the competition field at Ashley Field. It was kind of their traditional field. They, uh, I think, won some, and you know, there's a lot of sentiment, uh, sentimentality. Uh, within the community so they left it there and their theory was rather than building you know two very large you know beautiful stadiums at both high school locations let's build a joint uh, stadium here that will serve you know both needs and when they do have their their huge rivalry game they'll, they'll be able to you know serve it well and, and i think it also works well from a you know sectionals and, and uh, the, working your way towards state tournaments uh, and so, so on and so forth so again uh, this was their old high school before they built uh, uh, what is now going to be Sun Prairie East. Um, that we actually turned the field that originally was in a different orientation. It, there used to be a baseball field here, uh, but again, this kind of works really cool with the site in terms of uh, kind of it, it, it sort of sunk in from up in the parking lot level. So a, a very kind of unique uh, venue in that regard. Uh, roughly 700 parking stalls. Again, mainly with. Uh, in conjunction uh, with that, that uh, what's basically now more of a middle school. Can imagine the lack of track here. Oh, and again, so they do competition track at both the individual high schools, so kind of what you guys uh, are, are doing right now. Um, that does allow the stands to be a little bit closer, kind of a, a little bit better of a, a venue for soccer and football versus the track kind of spreading things out a little bit more. Uh, just a couple cool views of it in uh, dusk time. Uh, again, wanted to just show Verona, uh, just uh, for the sake of kind of being a, a, another newer high school facility uh, in the state. So uh, 3,500 uh, capacity, uh, parking on site, again, um, probably more so driven for the, the use of, uh, of the high school, but it's about 830 parking spots on site. Uh, and then just a couple other districts where it's sort of a shared relationship. Uh, West Bend High School, we've talked about this one a number of times. It's a very unique, very unique building. It's, it's one building, but two high schools, East and West. Um, so they do have a, a, a joint, most of their stuff athletically is joint, but they have a joint stadium, um, about 2100, and then again, uh, ample parking um, on site as well. And then kind of the other example, I, I think that just worth considering, and it's uh, sort of a very similar to your current situation, is La Crosse. So um, La Crosse has two high schools. They have Logan and Central. Um, Central's a very small site, so they don't have a competition field on. So they have, the district has recently uh, made some investments at Logan uh, to do a competition field there. And they do also utilize UW lacrosse, I think, mainly for their some of their, their bigger games, like their, their rivalry game. Uh, lacrosse is going through the process right now of, of analyzing and studying and combining their high schools. They have um, some declining enrollment situations. So again, we'll have to look long term to their uh, future solution as well. So kind of before jumping ahead, those were sort of the examples, um, again, just a, a kind of a smattering of examples, you know, across 
again, both your kind of local region uh, and, and neighboring districts, as, as well as a few, I, I would say, similar uh, districts as well. I guess subject matter experts, any thoughts or feedback on kind of any of these? Or I'm sure you have plenty of thoughts, right? <laughs> my, my only thought was, uh, the, I think the track is a huge component because I believe that limits the width that the field can be. I believe Bayport, I think there's a way to manipulate the track where you make the, you know, the long part shorter and then the the round part wider so that way you can make it bigger. But yeah, I think both Titan and UW Lacrosse, you can actually see it that, yes, you're absolutely, absolutely right. It's, uh, I think they call it a California uh, style track where it's a, a wider, fatter, so you have yeah, the ability to make the soccer field um, as wide as you need. And that's okay for competition. That's okay for competition then? For I have a wider track. So, yeah, so if, uh, again, maybe the, seeing, um, I don't know which one's the best one to see it. But actually, actually, this is a pretty good example. I, I believe this white line out here is actually the wider soccer field boundary. So soccer can be much, much wider than a traditional football field. But a traditional high school track is a little bit narrower than what that allows. I guess that was my question. The track must meet a certain specifics uh, versus wide yeah it's, it's the circumference of the turns yeah. um, you know the track athletes um, yeah there's a certain uh, radius that they want to stay um, uh, above because otherwise the turns are, are too tight and, and they can't run them efficiently I don't know we do have a track coach on yeah you're here. right on okay it's all about speed <laughs> Um, so from here, again, talking about needs and goals, um, kind of as we've, we've done, again, kind of trying to define uh, what we're looking for. Um, and again, sort of in some of our initial conversations, again, this is a, another situation where it's a shared use uh, facility. Um, we talked about competition venue. So a, um, we're calling it turf soccer, football, I'll say et cetera, because I think we've heard a couple times that the anticipation is lacrosse is coming somewhere down the pipeline, but again, a, a stadium with seating for about 4,000. So uh, a mirroring, you know, kind of what we were seeing with some of the, um, the other stadiums, especially in that Sun Prairie example. Uh, baseball fields, uh, would like to accomplish two fields, kind of a, a varsity and a JV, and then possibly the flexibility of one of those being turf, one of them being a, a, a natural grass uh, style field. And again, that ju just early discussions there. Similar on the softball side, two fields, uh, varsity and kind of JV style field. And then uh, really, I think someone mentioned a track. Uh, you know, there's probably a number of different ways to look at track. So, so we have a breakdown in the next couple slides kind of talking through that. In terms of practice, uh, some additional, um, whether it's turf or grass, soccer, football, and lacrosse um, facilities on, uh, in within this location as well. And then obviously concessions, toilets, team rooms, storage, parking, batting cages, all of those types of things um, to support uh, that facility. Um, so as we started to talk through it, we sort of saw a number of different options with regard uh, to the tracks. And it's really a question of how many track facilities um, OASD needs. Uh, so we're saying sort of option one would be, you know, again, maintaining competition at west and north um, and then kind of solving for the middle <coughs> school scenario where there is a plan right now to um, take the old Merrill site and put a track uh, at that location so we have a track at Bell Phillips and then up the potential the potential to also locate a track perhaps at Traeger uh, there's plenty of land there um, and so the Bell Phillips would Bell Phillips would serve as the kind of the north um, side uh, middle school venue and then Tr Traeger would serve as the west uh, side venue. Another concept would be to just go to three tracks. So we would have, again, one at each of the high schools, uh, sort of as they currently are, and then perhaps use the Bell Phillips one as the um, middle school track for um, all of the middle school needs. And then as we looked at option three, um, might be again, a high school stays the same at each location. 
uh, and then a combined middle school venue, and, and maybe, uh, you know, again, if we're talking about building this as part of that stadium, would be at this new location as part of kind of this new facility that we would be uh, constructing or building. So I'm gonna pause here for just a little bit and kind of just turn it over to the subject matter experts, maybe just starting on this page. Again, very high level in terms of kind of needs and goals um, for this type of facility. Is there anything you guys think we're missing in, in terms of this list? I know there's a, there's a ton of heat lights on the baseball, softball fields would be critical. You know, mentions they have lights. Lights oh, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, you know, everything lit. You know, one thing with the track facilities you need to keep in mind some of the field events shot with discus that require a large open space beyond uh, what you're seeing within the track and the football and soccer areas. Is there a, um, assuming a scoreboard that goes along in there that with everything, yes. along with your field or somewhere to put people to include coaches, your announcers, your, your clock management guy, yeah, that's all there? Yeah, press box. Yeah. Okay, yeah, got it. All right, let's jump ahead then, then to kind of options or solutions. So again, this is in a, a make-believe uh, site. We don't have parameters, but just sort of trying to lay something out that we think um, makes some degree of sense uh, to the kind of the overall look and feel of things. So starting with parking, uh, again, we saw a number of different examples, and, and we'll, uh, we'll kind of jump, I'll jump ahead maybe just a little bit, but we, yeah, we will need some significant parking to meet Oshkosh regulations. Again, Oshkosh says we need about one spot for every three people. So kind of when you start to add up a number of these facilities, we're probably almost pushing between 13 and 1400 parking spots. So there's a pretty big question for me is, again, I don't I don't know that we're building this to be a Walmart or you know, it's, it's only gonna be filled up for maybe three events out of the year. So I, as I looked at all those other examples, you know, it, is 850 a reasonable amount, amount, or is that even too high? So uh, I know that again, this is very site dependent. If we are building a location, maybe adjacent to some other parking lots or some areas or grassy areas, maybe we can accomplish it another way. But again, this was kind of to try to get a rough size uh, order of magnitude that we think we need. So again, looking at our two baseball, our two softball, our, our competition stadium, stadium of some site, some additional practice fields, um, and then as mentioned, we need you know a fair amount of space for our discus and shot put and, and jumping events as well. Um, we'll need some space for just for equipment uh, and, and potentially some indoor batting cages um, uh, as well. So again, trying to show um, you know, overall kind of a, a, a pretty realistic um, look at, at things here. If I jump ahead, uh, this is a, another variation of it, but taking uh, the track uh, piece out of it. So um, pretty much kind of just showing the, the Sun Prairie layout here potentially uh, on the site, uh, and then just kind of squaring this off. This, this again, able to do this at a, a, a little bit smaller size, again, still showing uh, quite a bit of parking, 775 spots there, our baseball softball configuration, and then again, in the interest of kind of showing a square box for a site, showing kind of two different uh, practice uh, areas as well as part of that. So maybe just pausing there for a moment, I, again, kind of subject matter experts any just initial thoughts on either of these? And, and again, I know you're probably going details right away, so, but just big picture wise. Repurposed. But yes, it will, no, it will not serve as a middle school eventually in phase two. Well, that's really not usable because of the, so the, yeah, the drainage area. Yeah. So that's, I was reminded of that by these two retention ponds in this. If we don't get any rain, it works great. Soccer <laughs> folks like it. But Global warming. Yeah. Okay, so, so Tipler is going to be repurposed. 
Mm -hmm. or some other stuff. <laughs> well, you know, when you look at 40 acres, we're, we're not going to find that inside of the traditional city. I mean, we're going to have to strike out on, on North uh, Jackson before you hit the interstate. Or we're going to have to go 21 out. Or we're going to have to go down the frontage roads. I mean, there's, you know, that's, I don't know of any place or else you're going to have to buy dozens and dozens of homes and life and raise them and that'll never fly. So we are, I, I saw one of the notes from the past that some of the concerns about the location, how far away. And I think Riff is really way out. I mean, it, you got the pond between us and the, you know, on the bridge. So I mean, that's going to be a big consideration. 40 mm -hmm. acres, or mm -hmm. 49 or 50 acres. So I have a question then. So with that really valid point there, is there an option three that has the you know uh, plan to get the, the fields that are currently at the high school to this level by chance? Uh, it could be. I, I guess as we've been looking at this, it's really about supplementing the, the need for additional um, facilities, additional fields. That's kind of been some of the some of the. Yeah, but, um, if if uh, another consideration would be to just do turf or something at, at the current facilities in lieu of something like this so that you know we can cut this in half or a third or whatever to um, save that that could be a possibility as well I'm sure well yes. maybe to some sorry oh i was just going to ask is there enough room at west and maybe even north well, i think there's probably room north to actually get enough to have like a stadium at that current field i mean is there enough room there to actually get the amount of stands and there isn't parking I haven't when, measured when, out. When, when we added the turf field, one of the things the city was pretty adamant on was we did not place that field in the lights or in the inside the current track. Um, the agreement with them is it's not the the sole purpose of that cannot be or or the primary purpose of that cannot be every Friday night football teams for city competition. Um, they were not interested in that. Um, with the neighbors and the neighborhood and the infrastructure that was there. Um, it was really presented as this is a JV, future JV freshman field uh, that would have varsity overflow if we didn't have access to Titan. But it, it really isn't in it. West, we don't have parking structure. And if, if we, I mean, we, we are looking at putting a turf field in there. Um, we would like to add lights. Again, I think that the city is going to push back and say Friday nights probably isn't going to work for varsity competition. I don't know that we have the infrastructure there to be able to put the kind of bleachers and everything else that we need to truly have a varsity competition there. Um, Four Friday nights. Oh, we got soccer games. You've got mm -hmm. there's, there, there's more than just four football games. So if you're talking about putting something like this in the in, in the city, but the city watch okay with something like this, then? depending on location, we haven't asked the city about where this is going. We don't have a location where this is going. I think maybe the biggest goal question that might be being asked is does all of this belong on one site there's efficiencies by doing that right but as some of the other um, you know precedents that we looked at they, they'd split them up at times so um, I know we're about to transition to kind of the discussion piece but maybe something I'd ask you to think about is does it belong on one site was was the plan to have those practice fields be turf or would those be grass fields uh, like yeah, like that one there. Uh, that, that I think again in this configuration, this would just this would be turf so that it can be used all of the time. I think if, if we're able to sneak another field on there, maybe maybe one of them would be grass so they can still have that facility as well. I'm sorry, one more question. We don't have a we don't have a baseball person here. Is that actually enough baseball fields for two high schools, varsity 
freshman JV. It'd be two more than we have right now. <laughs> <laughs> but you also have you also have fields at both schools currently. Yeah, but they're. No, I understand. That. <laughs> I mean, North is pretty nice, but yeah. it, has, it has life in the new course buildings. Yeah, yeah. West is pretty yeah. well. Having having a turf, at least one baseball and one softball field with turf and lights provides a ton of flexibility that we just don't have now. You know. But I mean, like a lot of things we've been saying, like go big or go home. Like, like is is I mean, if we're going to do all of this, how much is it to add another baseball field or softball field or whatever? And then like when our when the high school season is done, does this give us an opportunity to rent that space out to leagues in the summer, which is needed in the city? There are not enough fields. I would just add to that as. As the rec department, if you know there was a, a tournament, if we wanted to attract a tournament to Oshkosh area, you know, you usually have that on like a fourplex or more softball, youth baseball. Right now, the clubs, correct me if I'm wrong, but they don't have a, really a place to host something like that in Oshkosh. So they're traveling to Appleton, to Milwaukee, wherever. Mm -hmm. They're yes. not playing here. And we're not attracting people here either. So. Right. Even baseball, too, if you want to get into the Pony League, the 13, 14 year old, those are two regulation baseball fields, and I understand that'd be a great need if you had a turf field. At least you could get on there and play in the springtime. But if you wanted to attract outside people, that would probably be. Because I think our only one is Mary Jewel, right? There's only one There's only one spot. There's no way to do a tournament. No, I see. You can't it's do another wet field. field. Yeah. There's some cost efficiencies with combining the indoor athletic facility and the competition stadium. So if we find a location that's big enough to house both, are there cost efficiencies to doing that? I think the cost efficiency you'll see is um, parking. So you, again, that it would be a question of are we are we. Let's say we built, again, we built the, the indoor and the, the field house and, and, and some other things there. Again, I, I forget what number we were targeting. It was right around 900 parking spots, I want to say, on the high end for that. You know, the question would be there, do we need that 900 spots plus the 900 spots we need for this? Or if we had that on a shared facility, could we just build one, maybe 1,000 spot parking lot that can be utilized by both? Or, or if you make your indoor facility a varsity field where we can play our games indoors, soccer and football, then you're eliminating the whole need for that other one, and then you're just going to play indoors where, where soccer, football, whoever plays indoors, and then you're automatically going to have efficiencies with that. And, unless there's something I don't understand, but no, I, we just we're we're sure, we didn't cost it that way. Yeah, that that uh, point taken. Yeah, yeah. And I think from, we talked a lot about the trans, uh, uh, transportation. If we have kind of one location, we're transporting people to one location versus to this location, that you know, to th three or four different places. So I think there's some economies that way that we're just going to one spot. Well, would there also be economies for rec staff? Because you're not having, I mean, how many locations do you want to have staff at? Do you know what I mean? Right. A centralized location would be the most efficient, obviously. Yeah, and I, I, if, if this is a separate facility, I don't know that the rec department's involved in this. Yeah. yeah. This is this is a school. The way it's proposed right now, what we're looking at is a school district property. Yes. Not. We're, again, we're not renting out a one one field football field for a whole lot. So, I mean, so, I mean, to, to get the rec, I mean, if you're if we're looking at a rec baseball kind of a program. We're going to look at a seven or eight diamond complex with youth fields, not necessarily our varsity competition. It gets starting to muddy the water with DPI on what we're allowed and not allowed to do with that fund 80 versus fund 10. So that this is going to be our, our, our outdoor complexes are going to be a harder sell to have fund 80 really driving this as a revenue source. But if we combine both in one location, there might be opportunities to use that fund for 
for, like, let's say we need more parking and it's for going to be used for rec, right? Am I not understanding? I think we're going to muddy up the other portion of it okay. by putting it almost on the same facility as where one of our actual buildings are. Where I, I think we're, if we want to be clean with Fund 80 and DPI, what they're currently, a, we've talked about with DPI on this on, is it's its own separate site, completely independent, and runs and manages everything, and the, the district gets in a rental agreement to use it. Even that becomes really difficult if it's on the same site as a, your football stadium that really doesn't get rented by outside use and the primary user and renter is the school district for varsity competition. My concern is they're gonna come back on me and say, well, none of your other facilities, how are we running and managing those? Even though there might be a substantial tax saving for the community to put it in one site. So I guess what's the return on investment? I mean. To yeah. Yeah, that, that's a less of a concern for DPI as making sure there's a real clear delineation between, and the whole problem started a number of years ago where districts did abuse Fund 80 and they were sheltering money because you don't have the same accountability. Right. So they're levying in Fund 80 in, in an inappropriate manner, which made DPI really crack down on that, on school districts. So they're. I think we need to tread real carefully on what we're trying to put into, into Fund 80 and how we're, I, I, we really need that really clean. So it could be, I'm trying to understand, so it could be on the same site, but it could be very separate entities on the same site, perhaps of no shared parking or no shared facilities, but it could be on the same site if there's a site big enough for that. I don't know. I, I, I would have to do some, have some conversations with DPI because that's not the conversations we've had up to this point. Okay. So that if I'm understanding this, we can't consider one site for both. It almost has to be two different sites to avoid all the, the mess with DPI. I think at this point, at this point, yes, but I, let me have a conversation with DPI and see because right now all we've talked about is keeping everything completely separate and what what internally we've been looking at is the the indoor complex is all kind of potentially being sure. jumped punched together what roughly does that do with with us in dpi we've not looked at it and had the discussions as okay if it's a hundred acre property but some of it's divvied up to the school district some of it's to the rec department how does that look I, i've not broached that with the dpi so i don't want to get ahead of myself Wait. but I also don't want to say it's completely off the table because we haven't had that conversation. So um, is there any reason to separate the football field from the softball, baseball fields and put that with the rec so that you could rent it out all summer to all the leagues? I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear that one. So instead of having baseball, baseball, softball with football, you could rent out those fields in the summer as soon as the high school season is over if it's with the rec department as opposed to having those if, if two things if together. If it's the rec department, then the school district rents it as well. Right. So we would rent it for varsity baseball games mm -hmm. in practice, which pretty much means we don't practice there properly. Well, we're saying we're going to practice at the other rec site for everything else. <clears throat> We're not practicing at the indoor complexes, as far as I'm aware. On occasion. Yes. Inclement weather, yes. Not, not on a regular day. <coughs> oh. Last question. I'm confused. Absolutely. Why are we building an indoor yes, football? A domed football and soccer and batting cages if it's not for practice? Great question. For off season and in the weather. So it starts raining at 2.30 and Cobuston's gonna have a bus at school at 3.35 to get kids to that off site location? Probably not in that case, no. 
So it doesn't work for inclement weather. I mean, I, I've been saying this for a couple of weeks now. It's concerning to me how we're going to run this trolley service. But if we're not practicing there, then why are we building it? I guess I, I'm not worried about transportation and that kind of thing. You can't be looking at what we do now. Is that, and we talked about what you know the bus run, bus the buses uh, city buses don't do this and they don't do this. Well, once we have a new complex site, then we work with the city or our busing company and we design a new transportation route or a way to get the athletes to and from the site. I mean, I don't think we should get stuck about how we're going to transport. That seems like it's a secondary thing down the line. It's different for the swimming pool, the swimming facilities versus the outdoor stuff. I guess I have to rewind to facilities meeting number two <laughs> or three about who's going to be using the indoor athletic facility if it's not the school. I was under the impression, or maybe I was wrong, that we were building this for joint use of the school and the rec center. The rec. And the school was going to come first. Yes. So taking pressure pressure off of the high schools, a lot of that is is out of season, right? Out of season competitions or out of season um, workouts, for example. So when um, when there's Teams, there would be some, you know, I, I would guess there would be some times where, where the teams would be practicing in there, so would it be totally clean um, from not having our teams in there? No, but I think the, from my understanding, the assessment was as we would, the majority of that use is going to be for club, basically like basketball clubs, who now are driving up to the Champions Club in Appleton on Tuesday night at, to practice at 9 o'clock then those clubs would have the opportunity, we would rent those clubs and those clubs would have an opportunity to be able to come in um, and be able to use that type, of, that type of facility. Along with our baseball team, kids that aren't out for a winter sport would be able to come in and use the facility, um, you know, rent it out, you know, use our facility again. A lot of that, what's, what's happening right now is all of that is going on at the Champion Center at other sites in the Valley and we'd like to be able to bring that business into Oshkosh and keep those kids in Oshkosh. So um, during the day, I would guess you'd be able to do some seat work with the seniors, pickleball is hot, or whatever, whatever things you'd be able to do like in that space. Um, and that, again, if you had a situation like, you know, for inclement weather days, you know, I mean, if you've got a, a weather forecast that looks bad for, like the spring is a good example, and you'd want your kids, right now we have our baseball kids taking ground balls on the wood floor. You know, it'd be nice to be able to have those kids taking ground balls on turf, in, you know, inside. So, like, they would be using that, but it wouldn't be a consistent, like, this is where you practice, right? This is the, this is the spot that you practice on a regular basis. Um, you know, so it would be somewhat of a mix, but I think my understanding from Drew's point and what the DPI is concerned with is kind of dedicated spaces that would be, uh, this is where you practice, this is where you play, and these would be dedicated spaces. So the idea, as I see it, is, is the indoor spaces would be separate, would, would be not those dedicated spaces per se. There would be relief valves, if you will, from a school standpoint, and be able to bring those, kind of that club um, opportunity in. Whereas if we're talking about outdoor facilities where you're dedicating, like, this is where we play our games, this is where we do our practices, then that muddies the water as far as like, well, is that a fun 10? Is that in your general fund or is that in fun B? So that's kind of my, that's how I look at it, I think. So Jay, did you have? Yeah, I mean, this is for down the line, right? But so if you're saying that 
<coughs> the multi-purpose facility is going to be used for renting out the club teams and then be open to football who gets rained out on a practice how is it even going to work from the scheduling because you're going to schedule those club teams way ahead rest how would you even create space for the football team to get in there on a random Tuesday where it starts raining at 2 30. right I mean, yeah I mean those are things that we I think from a club perspective, like you wouldn't be in there at three thirty because or four o'clock. It's just too close to after school to have kids get home, get organized, and go. Like for for our like club soccer practices, we're we're not starting till like five thirty typically at the earliest. So I would think there'd be an avenue there where if something was rained out, you could get someone there and they could probably squeeze something in. Uh, you know, per perhaps it's a possibility. Okay, and then and then you're talking about football. I can't talk to my kids and practice with them outside of the season except for five days in the summer. Yeah. So I am not going to use any indoor facility at any point except for unless it's during the season and we get one of these, these days where it's cracked out to use the indoor practice facility. Mm -hmm. Can't do it. Now they can go there on their own and practice, right? As long right. as I'm not here coaching them. But otherwise, yeah. But it doesn't really yeah. help our football program. No, oh, ma'am. It does not. <laughs> and I guess I'm struggling with if we're trying to build something so that people stay in our community. I'm I'm fine with that. I can buy that, but then I don't think it goes to referendum. I think you go out to the community and you look for businesses to get behind it and pay for it. If you want something that's going to serve our students, then I'm all for it. bring the referendum on. What what number are we at? This the total. I mean, you know, fine. I will vote for it any day of the week. But if this isn't going to be for students then I'm kind of struggling with, I know of club sports, but that's already, that's not every student, you know. Uh, unless it's going to be for every student, I don't, I don't see us community support. Yeah, and, that, and that's a path, again, that's part of what this, this group is, is, you know, looking at and kind of fleshing out and being able to give feedback to the, to the board on, right? So there's multiple venues to be able to, you know, Ideally, be able to get that money. It might be through public, private, you know, public-private partnership. It might be through a referendum. It might be through a combination of things. You know, I think it's pretty clear when you look at like our four priorities and the laundry list of things that that we're looking at: go big or go home, and what the dollar amount is. Like realistically, we're not getting everything. You know, I, I mean, I think we have to live with that reality as we like land this plane and prioritize. You know what we'd like to see, and then potentially, you know, what are avenues do we think would be the most appropriate to be able to um, to be able to spend that money, or how to how to be able to to request for that money? Right? So I think that's all part of the part of the process. We're already renting Titan Stadium. What's the difference if we rent to UWO or we rent to our rec department? If well, our rec department is in our budget. Right, like they're they're part of the district, so we don't rent. Like they're they're part of the district. Right, but if the, if the funding funding pays for these athletic fields or buildings, and the district has to then rent from the rec department to use them, is that what you were saying? Yes. How is that any different than what we're doing right now, renting Titan Stadium from UWO? Because Titan Stadium is a part of our organization and taxing unit. We don't have to justify anything with the lease agreement. The, there, there's a lot of differences. One, yeah. there's a revenue source that you can build, right? You can't do that at Titan. I mean, very limited. It's, from a scheduling standpoint, we just got done talking about if we need that facility. I'm sure there'll be plans built in for sports, football, soccer to use it when necessary. You can't just call up Titan and say, hey, it's <coughs> raining. Can we use? Right, so that there's, I think, a lot of need for it. And we'll be able to rent it out to other entities as well. And there's Correct. there's an unlimited amount of those. There are. So it's a potential revenue source, like you said? Not a potential. It is a revenue source. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, very good discussion. Why don't we break into our groups for a little bit? You guys can kind of continue on. Again, uh, I think not to derail from the competition stadium, but uh, if, if you do obviously have additional comments on, along those lines, please jot them down. Otherwise, again, um, 
Any other goals or needs identified for the facility? Uh, do you think the options solve those? Again, these are pretty generic questions in terms of that, but and then what else should be uh, considered? And then again, we'll have, hopefully have a little bit uh, of time to talk uh, kind of location uh, then at the end. So we'll give you five to 10 minutes here to talk. These guys are reporting up. <laughs> Go ahead. Boss man. Yeah, so again, I, um, correct me if I'm wrong. I think what our, our concern and something I think that needs to be discussed is we have talked about it past meetings you know either this facility or the multi-purpose facility being built for the high school programs right so how are they going to utilize it you know to benefit their programs right I mean neither high school really has a for football at least, has a proper practice facility that you can practice on when it's raining out, right? Most, I know we go inside, and I, I'm sure you guys do too, Craig. I mean, so how are we gonna utilize that, number one? Um, and then what's, from the outdoor facility, um, how, what's, how's that gonna be used other than the three or four months out of the year that you have football or baseball? Is it just going to sit there? You know, what's what's a what's a plan for that? And can you even rent it out if it goes if it goes a referendum? Concerts, Grateful Dead. Exactly. Get it now. So those are sure. Anything else? Yeah. Well, I think is there a thought process to have them on different sites with baseball in one area and then football and track on another site so you can consolidate the size of this into two instead of one large part? All right, now are you guys ready? Well, we have a new property to purchase uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> on uh, 45 North, the Castle Farms. Uh, right at the interstate there, you know, they've got a, they said a 40 a acre 40 lot old. and then they also have 120 some acres. You know, 45 right. across the street. Yeah, it'll be easy right north of the uh, county park, no, so an easy fine. access. Um, I mean, I think we kind of like the idea of economy of scale if we could put the whole outdoor stuff in one location. That's uh, just doing that. And we keep talking about building for 50 years out. I mean, as, as vague as the requirements may be in 50 years, but we we see what has happened. Okay, for 50 years ago, 50 years ago in 1972, when they built North, um, it was just, wow, great. But here it is 50 years later, and now what? <laughs> so somehow or other we have to figure out how we're going to do this and convince people we did the right thing. <laughs> and, and, and we'll look at Brian there and his staff, you know, doing, and the school board eventually. Yeah. I mean, do we divide it and do like baseball and find a parcel of 20 acres someplace and then, you know, and have seating for 400 or something and then find a football place in another place? And do we want start and when do you start looking for property uh, yeah. the, the one thing about that castle farm thing is wouldn't it be cool to come off the interstate and have this really neat looking stadium right there wouldn't that be nice? not supposed to play realtor I know. <laughs> <laughs> no I'm, I'm playing I'm playing I know what I'm playing <laughs> <laughs> uh, subject matter experts, thoughts, comments? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Coach? No, go ahead. I mean, yeah, yeah. there are all kinds of thoughts and opinions. I, in my mind, again, if you're talking like hypothetical, ideal situation for me as a football coach, I like the on site at Oshkosh West, at Oshkosh North. My boys can come out of the locker room. We walk over to our field that we practice on with all our people there. We figure out parking. We figure out how to walk the people a little bit over to the, the stadium. 
and it's we make new traditions. It's an unbelievable feel. If everyone's ever been to a, a Kimberly game, you are intimidated from the second you walk in that stadium <laughs> because of how they did it. And I think if we're talking about redesigning high schools in 10 to 15 years or whatever it is, Mr. Davis, then let's design it around what we're about to put and invest the next 50 years into, which is an upgrade to our OASD facilities for our high schools, for our kids. And that's, in my opinion, again, new guy, that's, that's what it keeps coming back to for me. And ideals, I get it, but I think it's possible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it's just one thing we talked about is just the absolute uh, necessity of having turf, and that that just allows you to get outside earlier. It allows you to practice later in the year. Uh, you're starting earlier in the spring. When you have a wet spring, you're not going into a gym to have your practice. You know, you might have to bundle up, but you can be outside on a turf field training at times when you can't. And I know uh, like that was a huge issue with our football program in the fall, our, our soccer program. You know, you're in the parking lot having practices as someone else is on a turf field playing. Uh, so no matter where it is, I just think having that turf field is an asset. Uh, I think the thing to keep in mind, you know, I, I think like at, at Oshkosh North, I think it's gotten almost more difficult now because you have games happening at the turf field so now where are the teams that are supposed to be practicing there going? Now you, know, you might have a JV football game after school, so now your soccer team is practicing at 7 or 7.30 at night. So having multiple venues for that, that's the benefit of that, is then you can have different teams there at, at the same time. And not having everything be way late at night uh, to get stuff done. Uh, what about from the track side? Again, we laid out a couple different scenarios there. Did, did any of those make more sense to you? I guess it just you know kind of comes down to purpose. What would be the purpose of a track around the the whole stadium? How often would it be used? Is that feasible? Is that desirable? Or is there a better use of, of a, a new track facility or upgrading current facilities? <laughs> school side if, if they had a shirt facility would that be sufficient or do you think kind of a north and a west I, th I think that would help alleviate um, high school practices and competitions where well you got a middle school meet here today so we're not, not able to use our own track for practice or um, having an extra facility for them would be beneficial as far as that's their facility for practices which <clears throat> Where do the middle school practices right now? The parking lots, um, their grass fields. Uh, they can use those facilities for practice and for competitions. And the middle school track could be used for fly in classes that is built right on site and other purposes. Right now, middle school track, we only have the two tracks. So it's the only high school sport that is getting bumped for the middle schools to use it in, in all the sports that we have. So whatever we do, whether it's one or two at the site, at this new facility, it'll certainly help alleviate what we've got going on right now. Yeah, the, the, uh, it was interesting, the comment about the turf, it made me think of, uh, I, I'm, I live in Mequon, so Homestead High School is there, and, and uh, the turf field is, you can't actually see it from the road, it's like tucked way behind the high school. Um, but it's pretty incredible. I'll, I'll be driving past the high school, and it's just a, you know, just a garbage day out. And I see the lights are on, and I'm like, well, they're they're using it. They're doing something out there. I'm glad it's not me, but it's it's being used. So uh, it really, yeah, it's it's a pretty invaluable amenity. Um, so, um, well, uh, if it's okay then. Let's just shift gears uh, to site exploration. And again, we'll probably be a little bit on the brief side uh, tonight for this because I think again we we'll probably have a little more homework to do in terms of some of the configuration things that we're talking about here and maybe bringing forth a few more options for how this could look or function um, but again kind of wanted to just speak through that the code perspective here um, roughly uh, as we went through and I was probably very light on the number of you know baseballs and we mentioned 400 seats 
um, but probably a little light in terms of seating. But again, it jumps up really, really fast when we get to when we look at you know what our potential requirement for parking could be at again up to about 1,400 people. Um, again, the, the layout that I had done was about um, 850 spaces. But just to give you a sense, adding those additional uh, roughly 400, or I'm sorry, 500-ish spots to get us up to 1,400 um, adds about another five acres of land uh, needed. So it, that, again, that, that parking requirement really, again, increases that uh, site size pretty substantially. So uh, again, th this uh, I think this layout was roughly 42 acres, so that bumps us up to, to uh, 47 really quickly. And then obviously the more parking we have, the more stormwater retention. And again, we haven't done all of the analysis of just kind of showing that we will need it on site somewhere, but it also does increase the amount of stormwater that we'll uh, need as well. So any questions about that? I guess again, uh, I'm guessing some of the football events are probably the biggest in, in terms of what, if, if we provide it, Again, say 800 to 1,000, I'm sure more is better, right? But what do you think a sufficient number of parking is, is a good number to consider? Well, I mean, if you've done what your code, then you got to divide by three, right? Right, right. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, I'm going to say whatever the rules say and divide by three. Okay. Right. <laughs> just, just for point of reference, the indoor practice facility was nine acres. So um, granted, you know, we're not hosting football games at the indoor practice facility, but just as a point of reference. I only bring that up though again because again as we looked at all of the examples, I mean again none of that none of them can operate like a Walmart or again we're we're providing for that full amount. So again there generally is some partnership with the city to sort of come to a happy medium of we think this is a reasonable number and then whether it's street parking or a neighbor that sells parking spots for five dollars or what have you um, you know again then is it is it reasonable that we have to provide all of them on site I have a question for Brad and Craig if you had your own turf football stadium competition sta football stadium and track you uh, where would you put it I mean at West we're we're tight I mean I, I, I I think about a middle school track meet in the spring with the baseball and softball game going on, maybe a soccer game. We have people parked everywhere. Um, but if you had a football stadium, you know, and a, a track, you'd have to take out all that on the west side probably, right? And just have that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I always say what's the quality of the experience, right? When you bring people in, is parking adequate? concessions, you know, the whole experience. I, I think, you know, from my perspective, whatever you do, you want to make sure people walk away and say, boy, they really did it right. Yeah. Um, so the answer at West is probably no. I didn't get that. Could you try again? <laughs> 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 so, sir, what about, what about here? Okay, can we point that? Yeah. So how's Kimberly doing? Kimberly doesn't have the adequate amount of, of actual of yeah. actual parking, oh, but, they, but their 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 experience is second to none. They're a they're a suburb. They're, they when I go to, when I went to Kimberly the one time I went there, it reminded me of growing up in Brookfield, where there's all this land around there and all these big, you know, it's just not. This is a city. We have, and and, and I, we have some, we're so, sort of awkward like in a certain. We, we have enough, for, not enough for this, and and too much for that. So whatever. Kimberly is a, just a different. Plus, they have a different philosophy than we do, I think. But I don't love going to Kimberly to watch a football game. Besides the fact that it's Kimberly, like I don't think that's comfortable at all. Compared to, I'd rather go to Titan Stadium any day of the week because there's more space. You know, Kimberly leaves you this much space. They have filled every single. They have all those side you know things and there's this much space for the visiting team and you park blocks and blocks away at Titan no at Kimberly oh you know and then um, at Titan I mean I can always find a spot at the Associated or you know across the street and there's 10,000 seats I wish Kimberly didn't sit in the home section and have their um, cowbells but <laughs> 
I have, I have a question. Uh, if, if we did the hypothetical of, of doing a competition at both at both schools, how, how big of a, a venue would we want at, at both of the schools? In regards to the scene. Yes. So yeah. if we were saying if we we're saying if they were combined again if we we're saying they were combined you we were sort of targeting four thousand so but if we're building to date Craig and I this is twenty two years ago when the North and West game was the last regular season of the game Titan Stadium was full we had about ten thousand people yeah. so is that the rarity yes but you just don't know it's an experience so, it's a great experience yeah, you know what what that number is it's it's just so many factors that come into play. I think if you did something on site at West, you'd have to wipe everything else out. Yeah, you would. And basically say you're building a football stadium with something else, and that means your baseball field, your softball field, your practice soccer fields, they're all gone because you'd have to do something, you'd have to do it the right way, just from a space standpoint. So that's just my perspective. Well, I guess I'm wondering, do, then would you build sort of like two 2,800 seat, you know, at, at each location and then use Titans for the, the, the one, you know, game per year, the special game or what have you? Or would you build each of them as 4,000 seat, you know, venues? You know, again, just trying to get a, if that, if that is a goal, if that's something we should look at or explore, what, what would be the goal for capacity then, I guess is, again, kind of just the question. I think that, you know, that 25 to 35, and each would be suffice with the, the fact that the large crowd would move to Titan Stadium. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Again, I, I think in the interest of time, and like we've done in the, in the other one, we'll, we'll kind of we'll save the, the real estate game uh, for next time. Again, I think we have a little more homework in terms of break, chunking this up a little bit more, maybe into different uh, pieces and parts, looking at some other options and the pros and cons of those options. Um, so again, we'll kind of save, I think, some more of the, the site discussion uh, as well as the budget discussion uh, then for next time. Uh, it's just a reminder, we do have, I don't know if you have it on the schedule or on the slides for the wrap-up meeting. Good, good. Just a reminder that we have uh, we have our next competition stadium meeting on, the, on uh, is meeting 9 on the 16th. Then on the 23rd, we're coming back, and we're just coming back as the committee. Subject matter experts, other than a few, a few folks, will be here. But for the most part, we're going to toss it back to the committee at that point, and that's when we begin to, where you guys begin to do the processing of, okay, what are we going to actually recommend to the school board once all of this is completed? Um, you know, that's sort of the, the, the fun part. Just to continue on myself, but I almost feel like we need a wrap up bringing all of this together for us to visualize it right. first and then another wrap up to actually decide on the cost. Okay. So we've seen pieces of the jigsaw puzzle in starting in January. I now need to see the whole jigsaw puzzle. Going through maybe some of these, addressing some of the questions that we've yep. had yep. so okay. that then we can more intelligently meet again to discuss, okay, now what are we asking in terms of cost, et cetera. If there was I a think our goal is this this next meeting will have kind of a draft right. a, a draft of uh, the, the wrap up. So we'll, we'll spend a little bit of time kind of talking that. We'll give you guys something to kind of look at in terms of a draft of what that might look like. Would a then, packet, you know, at the end of next week's meeting with everything kind of combined, give you enough homework per se to mm -hmm. chew on throughout a week so that mm -hmm. the twenty would that be it beneficial? Be, I don't want to speak for everybody else. I think that's gonna be necessary. I mean I've kept every one of these but right. it would be nice to have it in one. Sure. We can we can do that. You know, the A bridge for each and then all combined and then a, yeah. Okay. And there there were also some questions regarding funding of these various things. How can they be funded? Remember it's a pretty simple formula. Um, fund 80, we've talked about that in terms of things that are attached to, that are available to the entire community. That's more for running it than actually putting it in, in most cases, if I'm not correct, Drew, correct me. Um, but for larger expenditures, given the fact that school districts are under revenue limits, our only venue for that is typically to go to referendum. 
know, so when it's a larger ticket item, those are things that tend to flow into a referendum. Now, as we've said before, if somebody comes in, I mean, Elon Musk just threw out some few dollars. I mean, he probably wouldn't even notice if we scraped off 20 or 30 million. Uh, if that were to happen, then obviously all bets are off, and any of these four projects can be greenlit in moments. Um, but it's just, you know, that's sort of the, the, the problem that we work through. And honestly, if you're a school board member, we have a couple who were on the school board, they're going to be keenly tied into uh, what you recommend because ultimately they're going to have to stitch it together with potential referenda or even potential uses of the district's budget. So so that's why this work is so important. So I, I guess the other thing, sorry, is, you know, when I'm talking about bringing the whole jigsaw puzzle piece together is you go over the timeline again. Like, mm -hmm. are we going to build all of this at the same time? You know, how many referenda are we, are we asking the community to vote on? Yep. You know, all of that so that we have a clear vision. And that would help me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think as as clear as we can make it, right? Yes. You, you know, I, and I think that's that's you know the the charge is to be able to, with the knowledge that we have, what would we what would we recommend to the board at this point in time? Um, you know, I, I think there's at the next meeting, I think we'll we'll also certainly uh, there's some questions about fund eighty and kind of how that worked today. We can bring back some clarity. Drew can touch base with the with the DPI between meetings and be able to come back. Um, to that, um, and I think it, you know a lot of this is the prioritization, right? So, so let's assume like we're not going to build everything at once, um, and so there might be some prioritization based on, you know, what's what do we think would be referendum related, and what do we think could be private partnership related? And maybe those are two kind of categories that we work out of, then prioritize within those categories. So there's different ways to be able to tease this out. We can start teasing that out, I think, next week, or at our next meeting, and then come to the finalization um, at the at the last meeting. And then if, if we get to May 23rd and we're like, you know what, we just need one more time to be able to come together, you know, I think we can throw that out and, and see if we can get people together. We want to make sure it's done right because we've spent enough time on doing that. But we'll try to try to do our best to land it on the on the twenty third if possible. But um, you know, we can we can work through it. If, if and and maybe just clarify. I think our table spoke, and I don't recall your name, but um, you know, we look back at the feedback review on page eight, faculty two meeting number two feedback review. Discussion number one, the first bullet point is we need to communicate clearly that this facility, we're talking about the indoor, is for practices for students. Uh, you know, and then busing players to practice is something we need to consider. So I think there was some misunderstanding on our part sure. that the indoor facility was going to be using consistently for students. I think there was plenty of discussion about, yeah, this is a community, but something did not click sure. in yeah. our brains that it was going to be a joint. Uh, use yeah. facility consistent. Yeah, I think we can bring all of that back yeah. to the recap, if you will, and just make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, you know, and again, that that has implications for funding, where the funding comes from. That'll be important as we're doing the prioritization. And, and ultimately, as you guys picked up on, there's also you know, a tough thing we have to take a look at is space. You know, the, the, the concept, the discussion of, well, could you even physically fit this at West Site? Probably not. You know, it, it, unless unless you took out everything else. I mean, you know, it, it, there's just going to be certain constraints on any postage stamp where we drop something where we're going to have to make sure that whatever we put in fits within the given space. I, I, think our, I think for me the bigger issue is if this isn't for students to practice, you know, the pool, the whole thing. Like, we already know that West and North pool don't meet the needs, so we're going to build an indoor pool for them to practice. But then we're saying we're not. Like I'm confused. No, they would they would practice at the pool. Okay. So I mean, are so, we building a practice facility or are we not? Because you're saying both things. You see that? Yeah. You know so let and let's let's spend a little bit of time. Let us spend a little yes. bit of time at teasing that out. Okay. I think we've got an idea of like what the question is. So let us spend some time teasing that out and come back to that at the next meeting. Um, and that then we'll, we'll trail back, you know, the purpose with the funding and kind of tie those things together. Just to make sure that we're crystal clear as we're, as we're moving forward. Yeah. I don't yeah. think I was going to that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I have a, a, a favor to ask. Um, you've asked us many times to envision where to build this. Um, 
but you've also asked us not to play realtor. It would be really nice to have a, a map of Oshkosh of this size that we can take a look. Because somebody said, oh, 45, and I'm like, I literally have to bring up a map of Oshkosh. Like, where? 45? Where? So that would be really helpful. We can also do that on Google Maps. Correct, we, we can roll that up in, a, in another yeah. screen and maybe take a look at that too. Just more Absolutely. Just the, and now, now's the time to, yeah. you know, I, I think again, we're at that point where we're starting to stitch all this together. Yep. You know, I, I think now's a good time to be able to. It's almost time to, to, real, to do that. Yeah. <laughs> we can get you a physical map. No yeah. Thank you. It, it could be on screen too. It's just, you know, something big. Right, right.